Now, within our sedimentary rocks, we can get some secondary features, which tell us a little bit more about the environment. And we call these sedimentary structures. So sedimentary structures are features that form usually right around the time of deposition, either right as or right after. But it's happening, this is important, before lithification. So remember, lithification is turning it into a solid rock. So if we're going to change it in any way, it has to happen before it turns into that solid rock. So we're going to talk about a couple of different types. We're going to look at bedding and stratification, and then we're going to look at sometimes features we can see within those beds. But like I said, what's really great is when we see these features, it's telling us about the environment. It's telling us what happened about those rocks as they were getting deposited. So our sedimentary rocks tend to be layered, right? If you take a look here, right, it's very easy to see. We've got one layer stacked on top of another, on top of another, on top of another. We call that stratification, right, or that they're stratified, okay? Um, where two beds touch each other, right, so let's say here I've got a bed and then here's another bed, okay? The boundary between them, we call that a bedding plane, right? So where they touch each other, we call that a bedding plane. Um, a bunch of beds together, right, we might call that strata. Okay, a bunch of beds. So let's take a look a little bit further in. So bedding is usually very obvious, right, when you take a look at this. I feel like it's pretty easy to see these layers, right, that are running through this rock right here. Um, usually you can see as different bands or stripes, they might be different colors, right, depending on the material that's in there. Um, usually it's horizontal, unless it's been disturbed by plate tectonics, which you can see here, these are not exactly horizontal, so we know something happened to these rocks, right, after they were initially deposited. Why does bedding form? Well, it's telling us something happened, right? So in this picture, right, what we have going on is we've got silt getting deposited, right here at time number one and then maybe the speed of the river changes it picks up speed a little bit because it's picking up speed and now can deposit gravel right on top of it so uh, that gravel is a bigger grain size so you're going to get right that bedding plane that's going to develop right in between them maybe the river slows down again and we start to deposit more silt right so Usually what we're going to see is a change in the velocity of the water or maybe a change in the sediment source, but it's going to cause something a little bit different to have, different uh, that we can see getting deposited with that sediment. So we're seeing a disruption, right, in that, in that deposition where we see a new type happening on top. That's what's making our bedding. Uh, beds definitely have thickness um, that can change. Sometimes they can be thick on one side and thin on another. If you take a look at this picture down here, you can definitely see that. It's not uniform all the way across because, again, that's going to depend on the environment. Okay. Sometimes we can also see non-deposition and erosion. Right? Erosion can also be recorded. We're going to talk a little bit more about this when we get to the geologic time chapter. Bedding is not always preserved, okay? Sometimes the environment doesn't preserve it, right? The depositional environment is not conducive for, to, for preserving that bedding plane. Or sometimes we, what we can get what's in this picture called bioturbation. Bioturbation is where you've got worms or clams or any other burrowing animal going into the ground. And as they burrow down into the ground, they're, they're mixing up the layers, right? And that mixing up of layers is easily going to destroy any bedding plane, right, that might be in there. Now, we like to map out our rocks, okay? As a geologist, right, especially as a paleontologist, if I'm going to go out and look for dinosaur bones, I'm not just going to take a shovel to my backyard in Louisiana, right, because there's no dinosaurs that lived here. I need to know where I can find the right kind of rocks at the surface. And what we map out are these things called geologic maps. That's down here. A geologic map is going to map out these things called a formation. And a formation is a group of rocks that are all the same type. So here if we take a look at this picture down here, we've got the Grand Canyon. And over here on the left, you've got the, the different rocks, right, that you can see in the Grand Canyon. 
But what's important here is, let's, let's take a look at the hermit shale. The hermit shale goes from here to here. And within this whole layer, you might see different beds, but the whole thing is made up of shale. The Kokodo sandstone goes from that bedding plane to the top here. This whole thing is sandstone. You might see different beds in there, but it's all sandstone. So that's important. So a formation is one type of rock, right? This mappable unit. And we can map it with those geologic maps. So a geologic map shows us the rocks that are literally sitting right at the surface, the ages of those formations.